Uh, this is a public meeting of the uh, Newbury Board of Health. Uh, my name is Steve Fram. I'm the chair of the board. Uh, please let me confirm that all members and persons uh, anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear us. Um, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Elaine Byrne. Here. Here. Alba Goulthorpe. Absent. Um, our staff, Deb Rogers. Hold on, got to unmute herself. Here. Uh, Ginger Bacon. Here. Uh, is there anyone uh, logged into the meeting from the select board? Hold on, I got to unmute them. Alicia Greco's here. And Jeff Walker. <clears throat> Good morning, both of you. Good and uh, Bob Connors. Hold on, I gotta unmute him. Yes, I'm here, Steve. To, to answer questions if I can be helpful. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Um, today is July 16th, 2020, 10 a.m. This is an open meeting of the new Board of Health, which is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. This is due to the current state of emergency in regard to the COVID-19 virus. Um, in order to mitigate the transmission uh, of the virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings as such. That's the reason for the Zoom meeting. Um, for this meeting, Board of Health convening by uh, telephone conference and or video conference via Zoom as posted on the agenda of the Newbury Board of Health. Uh, anyone, any, anyone that wants to uh, join in, you can do so by calling 929-205-6099, entering meeting ID 83509086861, and if prompted, enter the password 615 one nine two. I think that's all the housekeeping I have to do. Um, I guess not. Please note this meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video or telephone conference. Um, any materials uh, were provided to the Board of Health members uh, prior to and if they weren't, then uh, they'll be distributed for the meeting here. Um, as chair, I'll speak, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Um, further, please remember to mute your phone if you're not speaking, um, or the computer mute button when you're not speaking. Please use earbuds, earphones, with tablets or cell phones. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Please be aware that video participants can see you and that you should take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Um, for any response, any for any response, please wait till the chair yields the floor to you. State your name and address before speaking. Um, after after everybody that's uh, taking part in the meeting has spoken. I will afford the uh, uh, small amount of time for public comment. Um, 
The chair will raise questions through the raise hand function. Number one on the agenda, um, Plum Island Beach. Deb, bring us up to date. Okay, so um, I did put the board had requested and, and shot a email out to town council for their opinion on, um, you know, cleaning up the, the beach areas in the private uh, for the, you know, private property sectors. And I received the town council's um, opinion on that and sent it back out to the board stating that they don't, that she didn't, um, her, in her opinion, it, it was in the best interest for no town officials to um, vote to allow any volunteers to trespass onto private properties. And then um, it was stated that what about the public beach area in the easement um, area around the dredge and town council said that she would definitely need to get back to us on that information on whether or not that area could be cleaned up. Um, I shot another email to her this morning because of the short notice of us, you know, within the last two days, basically, um, I do not have that information at this time. Okay. Um, Elaine, do you have anything to add? No. Okay, I'm just going to read the last paragraph of the letter from town council and then we can um, try to find a solution. Last paragraph reads, given the risk of given the risk of exposure to civil and criminal liability, we strongly advise the board of health not to enter onto or authorize or encourage others to enter onto any private properties on the Plum Island beach area without first receiving permission from those property owners. We can draft and provide you with a form right of entry for each property owner to sign if you choose to proceed with the cleanup. So where do we go from there? Well, I think, um... I think we should use the form. We need to get the, the needles off the beach. Well, we all certainly agree to that. I do. Um, I guess the question is, is that something that the Board of Health does or something that the select board does? Doesn't matter as long as we get, can get them signed. I, I think at this point, um, it doesn't matter. My concern is what happens to the needles after they're cleaned up? You know, I, I, well, th that's, that's, a, that's an important question. <laughs> so, so if I may, um, um, if I may speak, um, I did reach out to um, Frank um, to Macalone, who director of Newport, and I also reached out to uh, waste management to find out exactly where we, we would dispose of these type of needles. Um, again, I don't know if it's just because it's only been a few days or if it's because it's July and everybody's on vacation. I've not received any response yet from those emails. Um, I would state that, um, you know, if the board you know, to, to decides to go forward and, you know, start the process of uh, having the beach cleaned up, we could definitely get the answers to make sure that they are disposed correctly um, and not hold this up. So that, that, you know, yeah. Okay, then, um, where are they going to be put in the meantime? Where's the, where's the trash? Maybe um, Bob will tell us what happens to this when he cleans it up? Where do they put it? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I could help if you would uh, want me to comment. Please, please do, Bob. 
Okay. So uh, a couple of things I had provided, Steve, uh, Lisa, with the actual scope and area that is impacted by uh, where the where the waste collects, and it's at the rack line. Uh, I, Lisa had sent me back an email uh, that she was fine with us cleaning the beach at the tidelands, which is the top of the rack line, uh, regardless of private property and not give a public trust uh, doctrine that allows the public to pass and repass. And any town owned property or property that is given a recreational easement to the town. Uh, so what's happened in the past has been when when a needle has been found, they're usually discovered by a, a beach goer. Many times they bring it to the police officer mm. who may be on duty at the parking lot. And then the fire department contacted to uh, come at the fire station for handled in the past. What what we do is when we're cleaning, it's a, it's really a, a conveyor type system that the operator is looking at, and and you can see where a uh, when a needle is picked up in the machine, it can be easily removed and uh, isolated and bagged, uh, and then coordinated with either the fire department that has a shop spot. Uh, and and the like, and we do inspect the hopper. The beach cleaner is more like a street sweeper, just for a visual that has a hopper in the back that collects whatever may be on the on the beach, bottles, cans, uh, seaweed, rack, thatch, and then any other if there's medical waste in it, and and that simply is a, it can be examined and visually inspected, and in any waste visuals. Uh, or a scene we can remove and again isolate uh, and then if it's the fire department that's been kind of the process now Steve but uh, so there should be a revised letter or a revised communication coming from town council um, I had actually forwarded a copy of what she had sent to me to both chairperson uh, Walker and uh, Greco um, so that's what I can offer. It, typically, we're, we're not going to be going on, per se, private property. We only, the only where area that the, the needles collect is at the, the top of the rack line, which is where the high tide distributes it. Uh, and, and that's just considered tide lands of Massachusetts and open to the public. Mm -hmm. Okay. You didn't send one to the Board of Health? You know what? It, it happened just yesterday, and uh, it, it, and I'm not going to put words in anyone's in anyone's mouth. My understanding was they were going to revise what had been sent in the communication to the board, uh, updating that with that information. It was just more detail that town council needed uh, on, on the actual procedure. Uh, so. It, it would seem to me, I'm not sure if, uh, if Alicia or Jeff or Tracy's on the line would chime in on that, but th that's my understanding. And again, I I'm not trying to put words in anyone's mouth. Um, we have not received anything yet, right, Ginger Dub? No. The uh, would it be helpful, Chairman, if, if I read the note? Um, that Lisa said, and then you still have to wait for guidance from her, but at least you can understand where she's thinking, if that would help. Um, kind of like a copy of it, if you can get us one. Um, oh, but you're, you're welcome to read it. But Bob, Bob, can you forward the note you got from Lisa to, to the Board of Health? Yeah, I, I, I'm just not sure what email it should go to. If um, Steve, I don't know. I, I may have your personal email, but I, I don't think I have either Deb uh, or either of the agents. 
You could just do board of health at townofnewberry.org and I will distribute to the other board members. Okay. I, I'm going to mute myself and I can probably do that uh, as, as you're discussing this and see if we can get that right over to you. But I think, I think Leisha's uh, reading it would be insightful for the board and then I'll, I'll send over the actual document if, if that makes sense. So after um, Bob explained to Lisa what he just explained to the board, uh, she got back to him and said, this is helpful. Can you confirm you are cleaning the area noted that is either Commonwealth Tidelands or the private easements provided to the town? If so, we are good with that. Please confirm and we will advise accordingly. Thanks, Lisa. So he confirmed that that is in fact the part that he's cleaning and she was supposed to advise the board accordingly. I think that's the letter that you're still waiting on. Okay, and <clears throat> I guess I was confused because we were talking about uh, piping plovers the other day as well and um, they are not at the tagline, so. Um, Bob, do you wanna to speak to that part? Actually, Alicia, I can speak to that. Steve, <clears throat> the uh, piping plovers move back and forth, and that's probably why whatever Audubon or anyone else was talking about, um, the beat sweeper really doesn't go, and remember, we're here to provide information. The beat sweeper really takes a straight line, um, and I think what they're afraid of is during the passage of the bee sweeper, if there were nests there, which are not confirmed now, that as they were going back and forth to the to the water, they could be intercepted by the bee sweeper. And sometimes when they're there, that's when people have, um, you know, volunteers walk in front of the bee sweeper, but you still have to have confirmed sightings. Thanks, Joe. Um... I still have a question. We, it, nobody answered about what happens to the rubbish that's picked up off the beach. Who, who, where does it go? You know, when, when, when he cleans the beach, where does it go from there? Bob. Um. Yeah, it, can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm yep. on mute. Yep, okay. we can hear you. We coordinate this. Okay, Steve, thank you. We, we, co we coordinate with the DPW. They provide a truck and it, I mean, typically we're just removing rubbish, rack and, and thatch. It just seems that after heavy rains, CSOs coming down the river from uh, a lot of urban areas. It's being it's all untreated, and any any wash, any uh, any needles or waste that are in the gutter lines of the streets gets flushed into the storm system, ends up in the combined sewer storm outflow, and discharge without treating. When normally that is uh, captured at the wastewater treatment plant. So it, it, it but, but just, just to be clear, it isn't like we have hundreds of needles on the beach. There, there could be a handful uh, on the beach at, at a time after one of these uh, CSO discharges. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bob. Well, Elaine, does that answer your question? Yeah, we, we, we don't know where it goes. Well, it gets picked up by uh, DPW and right. of someplace and that's fine for rubbish. Um, an occasional, an occasional needle may be mixed in, but we have no way of knowing that. That's just a supposition on my part. Um,
I'm not sure exactly where to turn right now. I mean, right now, all the, uh, I heard Lisa's note that Alicia got. We don't have it. Um, and until we receive it and any other amplifying information, I'm going to go with what we have. And uh, we strongly advise the board not to enter onto or authorize or encourage others to enter onto any private properties. I think until we get Lisa's thing that says it's okay to do with the tideline, we have to live with that. I don't know. Tell me your opinion. Elaine? I, I'm, I'm wavering here, Steve. I, I think we have a problem. We have, we, we know we have the needles out on the beach. And I think we need to get them off. And you recommend doing that how? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have to um, pick a date here that we get this final letter from from Lisa, and if we don't get it, then I I, I don't know what to, what to say. But let's. Um, I, uh, if I can interrupt you, maybe maybe we need to uh, make a motion pursuant to our receipt of that letter. One. And um, again, I don't mind doing it along the, uh, the high tide line uh, and, and further in for that matter. Yeah. But I think we should also put the caveat in that uh, there will be one or two volunteers that walk in front of the machine to make sure that the plovers um, are not are not endangered. Um, I just don't want to get into that problem should it occur. Mm -hmm. well, I will entertain a motion, something like that, if you want to make one win. Okay, I'll make that motion that um, it will be subject to receipt of the letter um, with the appropriate language from town council that um, that Alicia that Alicia um, read that um, and, but what date what date are we going to um, say that they were we can't put a date on it yet. I don't think. Okay. Um, this is. We're just waiting for the receipt. When and once we once we receive the letter, uh, we we can. That that gives us permission to do it. We can set a date with Bob and DPW, and. Okay. And, and either Audubon or some volunteer, one or two volunteers that will walk in front of the cleaning machine to ensure that no piping plovers are scooped up. Okay, I'll make a motion that we um, allow the uh, cleaning of the beach by uh, Bob Power, uh, Bob Powers, Bob Connors. Oh, boy, I'm thinking of uh, Bob Powers. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Uh, subject to re subject to receipt of the uh, letter from town council setting the parameters of the um, of the line on the beach that he can that he can have the street the uh, sweeper and also um, that we're going to have to have some volunteers to walk in front to make sure that there's no piping plovers caught up in the um, in the cleaning and I also want to add to that that we have to have the um, the question of where the uh, debris is being deposited because it is hazardous waste 
and I want that resolved. So if we get all of that, that that's my motion. I'll second it. Okay. Um, all those, Steve, it looks like um, Mr. Walker has a question for you. Go ahead, Jeff. He's got to unmute himself. Hold on. The um, the plovers will fledge too, and the other things won't be important. You know, they will. Uh, there's a point when birds are no longer fledging. So, right. So you won't have to have those extra things in place. And usually, there's no plovers sighted on the private property area of the beach too. So. That's why this has never come up before. It has come up before maybe in other parts of Plum Island, but it's never come up on the private property. So, but obviously I'm not positive the date, sometime the end of July or something, the birds are all gone. <clears throat> okay. So, looks like um, select person Greco also has a question, Chair. Um, this is a comment and I think maybe um, Mr. Connors can confirm what I thought I heard, but I thought I heard um, uh, Elaine's concern of where the needles are going to go once they're collected. Um, and I believe I heard Mr. Connor say that because of the way the machine works, the needles are easily um, identified. They kind of, I, I think of it as like a, a, a thing that comes through and sifts through and the, the needles will stay at the very top and they're, and they're bagged. Um, probably in a biohazardous material red bag and dropped off at the fire station to be disposed of in a sharps container with um, EMT. I believe that's what I heard. Is that correct, Bob? Uh, yes, that, that, that would be the procedure I would suggest, uh, Alicia. Thank you. So the, uh, can I just clarify that? You're saying that's what you suggest, but that's not what has been done in the past? What's been done in the past is when needles have been found, they, they've been uh, consolidated in a bag and then the fire department has come out and, and taken them. What, what, what may simplify that is we could certainly just order a shop's disposal uh, box the, you know, the PVC uh, case that you see in airport bathrooms and, and the like. Uh, and then just turn that, over. if we discover uh, any type of medical waste, we could isolate it in that fashion. Um, I think what, one of the issues may be, Steve, that if an individual found a needle on the beach, they're more likely just to dispose of it in one of the trash barrels that's provided. Uh, and Certainly, that would just go, you know, undetected at that point. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the cleaning process, we, we we have it basically screens all of the sand that is collected uh, and all of the other debris, and it travels up uh, a, a screen before it gets disposed. And the operator again watches that uh, for a number of reasons. So it. I think we can get to that finish line. It may just simply be having a shops box that we then turn over uh, to the fire department from time to time uh, of, of the any medical waste that we uncover or are able to see. Okay. So have we, do we still need a vote on that? Have we voted on that yet? No, we didn't vote on it. All right. You're, you're, you're happy with your Steve, motion? I, yes, I'm happy with Steve, my I, motion. I, I did forward that communication, Steve, to the Board of Health website. I'm not sure whose who's, uh, email that lands on. Okay. Um, have you got any proposed timeline, Bob? Well, we're um, we're certainly ready to go. Uh, obviously, everyone, you know, the the Plum Island community and and any resident that's using the beach is anxious just to rectify the exposure. 
it be, just becomes very unnerving for people to, to to think that there is the potential for medical waste below the sand or tra you know in Iraq. Everyone's barefoot, so it. I, I guess time is of the essence, Steve. Would would be how I would. Plan. We're ready to go, uh, mm -hmm. and certainly the DPW uh, Jim Surrett is is has been very cooperative, and and certainly uh, protection too uh, has been accommodating for any of these issues as well. It looks like Ginger wants to confirm something. Yeah, I have not received the email as of yet. I'm looking right now. It still hasn't come through, not to Board of Health. Okay, let me let me just see. I apologize. I'm trying to do this on my phone as I'm talking to everybody. Um, let me just see here. I, I went on to the website to get the Board of Health email um so it's uh, I, let me see the if email i'm going to be using i think it goes to deb rogers um to be honest which would be me with me too we have the same email so it's the okay, same one because it's board board of health at org. that's yeah. the correct one yes okay let me let me try to resend that right now if i may okay and, and hopefully that becomes. You can tell that Bob's in Newbie because of cell service. <laughs> oh yes, I'm sitting outside the fire station at, at the moment, Steve. So it, we're uh, we're in a black hole here, I think. Okay, you know what? Hang on. Uh, so I, can I just ask a question? I was just pulling up the uh, Greater Lawrence Sanitary District Combined Sewer Overflow Reports. Um, the last um, event was on June 25th, it looks like. Um, and it had a heavy rain, high flow um, recording. Does the Board of Health get those reports as well? Yes, we do. Okay. We do. Because that might help be a little help you be a little bit more proactive with this stuff and maybe um, kind of trigger this was June 25th so I'm not sure when some of these syringes and stuff were first seen but it may help kind of be proactive and go out and check beforehand. So I see one that happened on July um, 14th. Okay that's not on their report so. Okay they send them to us period. Okay. So. Okay. This is part of what that Senator DeZoglio is trying to do to put into the warning system when, you know, there's problems upstream. And that's what the Senate and the, uh, they're trying to make it so we have a state warning system for when they really have to let the CSOs go because the amount of gallons that they let go every year is mind boggling in the millions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Are we going to vote, uh, Steve? We still haven't voted. I'm uh, uh, going to vote on your motion right now, Elaine. Um, okay. How do you vote? A. I vote yay. Um, I, I guess I still I still want to receive something from Lisa and. Well, we will right. contact you in a minute, but uh, we're comfortable what, with you going and doing, I guess. Right. Well, that's what my motion is subject to. Yep. So, wait, wait for our notification, Bob, and then you can. Right. Do it as, uh, as discussed. Okay. I I apologize, Steve. For some reason. I'm trying to send this to you, but when I copy the website, it says mail to board of health at Newbury.org. And the mail to kicks it out as an invalid email address. So I'm going to, you'll have this. Did you uh, say at, at Newbury.org? It's at town of Newbury.org. Sorry if you said that. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, it says uh, board of health at Newbury. It, I just copied it right off. Yeah, town, town of, of Newbury.org. Newbury. Yeah. Trying to do this on my phone, unfortunately. It, it's that well, Alicia, mail too, and I can't it. see. She sent it to us. If Alicia has it, can she just forward it to us? 
Can you forward it to me, Bob, and I'll forward it to them? Okay, I can do that certainly right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Can I speak? Go right ahead, Alicia. I just want to thank the Board of Health for put, putting this together. And um, I, I know you understand that, that the, uh, the uh, danger and the concern, and, I, and, and thank you for elevating this and really moving, moving on it. The last thing I want is anybody to step on a on anything on the island and, and on one of our beaches and, and have that get out that, you know, Newbury has needles on the beach. So um, kudos to you guys. I'm really appreciated. Thanks. Welcome. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to send, I got this note uh, from Bob, which is coming to your way right now. The, the email I forwarded, Steve, is my response to town, uh, to town council confirming that the areas she identified are, in fact, uh, the, the only areas of concern for cleaning. Okay. We still need the letter from town council before we can contact yep. you to go ahead and do it. No, certainly. I understand that. That's just uh, Give it a second. Now, how can we proactively prevent this from happening again? So when it's impossible. Is it? All right, let's get the email. I mean, the, 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 the syringes on the beach, um, it's just an ongoing thing, Alicia, and in a perfect world, we would clean the beach every week or two. Um, but I think Alicia means a protocol. Do we have a protocol now? Is that what you mean, Alicia? Yeah, because I agree with Steve. I mean, in a perfect world, there'd be no, no, no needles. But yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little lost. I mean, Bob's been doing this for four or five years. Mm -hmm. And the town, I think the Board of Selectmen at one time, and I, I don't know, I forget, <laughs> but I think the board actually voted and that's how the town picks the stuff up. This just didn't appear in space. And what stopped this process, I guess, was the Audubon sending a note to the town administrator and people got worried that, you know, there were birds that turned out, I guess, not to be on the beach, but the beach cleaning process has been something and Bob can speak to this this just didn't happen this year or even last. It's been going on for five, how long has this been in process? And, and what it does, it's something the town and Bob participate in and it saves us having to go buy a beach cleaner and put a man on it. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason I'm, I'm a little confounded and it's all fine. We seem to be on the right direction. How long have you been cleaning the beach, Bob? Yeah, Jeff, uh, thank you. We've been cleaning the beach for nine years under the Newbury Official Town Sponsor Program and in coordinating that with the DPW. We, we clean the beach on a once or twice a week. Once the beach is clean, uh, it's not that a lot of debris collects, but if we come across anything like medical waste, uh, we, we get to eliminate it and we, and it's not that hard to isolate. Uh, and, and Steve, you're right. It, it is a weekly task. It becomes less cumbersome once the beach is clean because it's just whatever comes in on a particular tide, which would trigger cleaning the beach. Ginger, did you have something? I thought I saw you raise your hand. Yeah, I just printed up the email. I'll bring it out to you. Okay. Also, um, Deb, in your, in your correspondence or conversation with uh, town council, um, I think we should have them draft the uh, right of entry form and we should try to get everybody to sign it and that'll make this thing just invisible. 
Yeah, well, I don't know if the concern is private property. I don't think the town wants to clean private property. I think the town wants to clean the public beach and the public easements in that tidelands water. Am I am I misspeaking, Bob? No, that that's that's cor that's correct. I mean, that's the goal, uh, Alicia, and it's the only area that could someone have medical waste on their private property, then they'd be responsible. Uh, if somebody dropped a needle, uh, it just wouldn't come from the a tide, um, and, and that's really where the concern is. It's it's just what's coming down the river and ending up on the beach. We, we within the parameters of what uh, town council appears to be comfortable with, because everyone has public access to the areas identified. So yeah, I just want that to be abundantly clear that my concern wasn't about private cleaning private property. My concern was cleaning the public beach and the public easements provided. Right. Yeah, the only reason the only reason I suggest that Alicia is we, we have the mall sign north of the center. Why don't we make it uniform and be able to do the whole beach if there's a problem? I mean, if, uh, if if God forbid a big storm comes and we need to help the people south of the uh, center, we'll have to already have their thing, their uh, uh, right of entry signed. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, and as well as a storm, it also lets us, you know, if if there's a, if there is a mild to moderate storm that pushes stuff further up the beach it allows us to clean that. So I, I think it's just prudent to get uh, the right of entry form signed by the people on that end of the island. Elaine, what do you think? I, I think so, because uh, people go to the beach, they sit all over the beach. They don't say, oh, is this private property? You know, they say this is the beach and they park wherever, there's sand. Yep, exactly. So, uh, anything else in this regard to come before the board? No. I guess not. So, we'll thank you, Bob. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, no, thank you, guys. And I mean that. Thank you for jumping on this because. Yeah, no, thanks, Steve. Are. Thanks, the board. Yeah, uh, th th thank you all. It, certainly it's an important issue, but you're, you're doing this with a short notice and uh, you know the community and the residents greatly appreciate it. You know, for the I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to take too much of the credit for the board, but I will thank uh, Deb and Ginger because uh, we put it all on their shoulders and they do a great job for us. Thank you. Thank well, you. Um, one more item on the agenda, um, 70 Cottage Road. Deb, do you want to bring us up to date on that? Sure will. So the septic system needs to be replaced at 70 Cottage Road. The variances that are requested are variances that would need Board of Health uh, approval. It's something that I don't have the authority to approve, and that is the system itself. I've reviewed it a, a few times. We've gone over it with the director butter. The, uh, the original plan, it was designed by Steve Sawyer and the original plan showed the leach field 54 feet from the neighbor's private well. DEP allows you to go up to 50 feet and, but they prefer, they prefer 100 foot is what the, the, they'd like to see. So this particular plan was proposed at 54 feet was brought to the director butter for her approval so that I could bring it to the board and say that she approved of it. And um, after reviewing it with her, which was really smart on her point was she had her designer, her, her personal designer as a third party review it and determined that, you know, it could be pushed over as far as possible as, to the other end. So doing so, um, 70 Cottage Road um, engineer, who is Steve Sawyer, slid it over as far as possible. 
which they got a 77 feet difference, which is, is, is great to go. And that's the best they can do. They'll do a poly a liner around it. Um, everything looked good. Uh, both parties agreed to it. Um, I actually got an email this morning from the abutter who said that she'll uh, put it in, she put it on an email saying she approves of it, but she'll also send in a letter for the file saying that she has no problem with the abutter's septic system going 77 feet from her private well. There's no other, I mean, it's very tight in there. There is no other place to go. And um, I think she felt confident and knowing like, again, it's allowed up to 50 feet um, by the state um, and 77 is, 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 is very efficient for it. So um, I think we're good with that. We just would need a, a vote from the board to approve of that system. So right now it's 54 feet and we're going out to 77 feet. So that's an improvement, is that correct? No, 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 no. So I don't know where the existing system was. It's just in an area which it would be closer anyways. It definitely is around that. The 54 feet was the first proposed plan that um, Steve, sorry, we designed on the video. Yeah, and um, it was it was um, re, re looked at, and, and all parties agreed to slide it as far over as possible. And now that it's 77 feet away, which is much better. So it is, it is definitely better than what's ever in the ground right now. I mean, I'm sure it's an old, old system deep in the ground, and it would definitely be closer that way. So there's no question in accordance with Title V that this system is definitely going to improve the, the quality of the ground there. Okay, Elena, I'll have to make, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, plan as presented. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I, I vote aye. So it passes two yes, one absent. Or anything else, uh, Deb or Ginger? Um, I do not have anything else at this time. I do not have anything either. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ginger, next week you are in charge, I guess, because uh, someone's going on vacay. So, all right, everybody have a nice weekend, and uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Right. Thank you, Deb, for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Thank you, Susan. Yes. Thanks for coordinating. Okay.